In order for us to deploy a serverless application on Azure, we'll use a function app to host our quote-unquote dynamic code. Then we'll build and upload the files to a blob container. Uh, in the next step, we'll use a CDN to replicate the files globally, but more importantly, the use of a CDN will allow us to specify an entry point to our app using rewrite rules. The last step is to add the domain where our static files are uh, to the function CRS settings in order for the two pieces to communicate over the network. Okay, in the Azure portal, click New. Under Compute, scroll down to find Function App. We'll enter an app name, which will actually be the domain URL for uh, our endpoint. Uh, we'll create a new resource group, and I'll put it in West Europe. And I'll just clean up the storage account name a little bit. Click Create. Now that the Function App is initialized, let's create an API resource, and we'll do that by adding a function. Choose custom function for more control. And choose uh, HTTP trigger JavaScript and name the resource messages. For authorization level, we'll leave it as a function. Click create. Replace the code in the index.js file with the one provided in the written article. The difference between the template code and uh, the one that we're about to copy is that the latter does not require a query parameter to be passed to it. We're also setting the content type to be in JSON format. We'll save it and run it. The default method used is post. Uh, let's go ahead and test it with git. And we get the same results. Let's grab the function URL so that we can hard code it into our React app. We'll open our app in a code editor. I'll use Sublime. Let's edit app.js in the source directory. And on line 23, we'll replace the insert API endpoint with the function app endpoint that we've just created. Save and close. Uh, now it's time to build the app. And we do that by issuing a yarn build command in the terminal. This will bundle and minimize the React application, in essence, creating standalone code and assets in a new build directory. The next step is to upload the files to an Azure blob. Now, we already have a storage account that the function app is using to store the code. What we'll do is use it and create a new container so that the files are automatically assigned correct permissions of public access. We'll find the storage account, then click blobs to create a new container. Let's uh, call it web. To upload the files, I use Microsoft's Azure Storage Explorer. If you don't already have it installed, you can find it at storageexplorer.com. We'll close out the blob service blade, and in the storage account blade, let's click on Open an Explorer. Locate the new slash web container within your storage accounts. And we'll simply drag and drop the files from the build directory into the storage explorer. Refresh to make sure that the files are there. And it looks like we're good to go. Now we can go ahead and create our CDN, but first let's take a look at why we need it. We'll navigate to our container's public URL and then to our index.html file. So it looks like the file is actually there, but there's nothing on the page. Let's open Developer's Console in Chrome Tools to investigate. The assets are not being pulled from the correct URL, and if we look a little closer, the page is trying to load them from slash static, but we actually have another URL, slash web, in front of it due to the container naming. To circumvent this issue, we'll use a CDN, and the CDN will also let us create rewrite rules so that the user won't have to type in index.html after the domain. In Azure Dashboard, click New, and in the search box, type CDN. The first entry is what we want, so I'll click Create. 
I'll give it a random name. Use an existing resource group so that all of the application is logically tied under one. For pricing tier, we need to go with Premium Verizon as it's the only tier that offers the rewrite rules. Once the CDN is instantiated, we'll need to create an actual endpoint and link that endpoint with our original files in the blob container. Uh, this endpoint name will be public facing, so this is where you may want to think of a good one. For the origin type, choose storage. Uh, in the origin host name drop down, find the blob storage that we've created. Now for the origin path, choose the container that we created for our static files. In my case, it will be slash web. For the protocol, I'll go with HTTPS only and I'll leave the optimization as general web. The endpoint is created, but it will take a few hours to propagate the files through CDN. In the meantime, we'll create the rewrite rules, which will also take up to four hours to propagate. Let me quickly get rid of some tabs that I no longer need. In the CDN blade, click on manage. While that loads, I want to show you the blog that gives excellent directions on how to set up the rewrite rules. We'll scroll down to number six, add your rules. We'll give it a name. For the features, we'll want to add URL rewrite. And we'll grab the patterns from the blog post. For our purposes, we'll only need the first one. And we'll wait while the rules are propagating. Like I said, it may take up to four hours. All right, it's been a few hours. Let's see where we're at. Refresh the page. And it looks like the rules went from pending to active. So take a look at the page. We'll grab the URL. So the page looks properly formatted, but we don't see the messages from the function app. I'm going to open the console and see what the issue may be, and it's uh, complaining about its course permissions. So let's fix that. First, uh, let's, uh, let's copy the domain. Then we'll go back to Azure Portal, expand the menu, click on the dashboard, and click on our function app. We'll click on settings. Uh, looks like we actually need platform features. Click on course and add our domain into the settings and don't forget to delete the last slash. Click save. All right, go back to the page and refresh. And once more. And there we go. Refresh again, and yeah, much quicker the second time around. Let's change our function app to see how quickly the changes take effect. Close this out. Find our function. And just add a couple exclamation points. Save it. Go back to the page, refresh and instant. So just to recap, we've created a completely serverless dynamic app on Azure using the blob storage for our static React files, a function app for dynamic serverless computing, and a CDN mainly for the rewrite rules, but also to place the files closer to end clients for less latency. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this quick tutorial. Cheers.